Shout out to Coppish. Shout out to keep Coppish, up, guys. Good work the up. two legends, Emil Heskey, Howard, Howard Gell. Can't get much better than that guy. You know what to do now. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm with legends, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
And, you know, Arsenal, they are, I'm not saying they surprised me, but what they've done the last two years has got to be, you know, congratulated. The way they're playing, the football they're playing right now. It's scary, man. It, it, it's scary because usually we go Liverpool, Man City, and we feel like Man City. And Liverpool, it's going to be them too. And if it's not Liverpool, Man City, go win the league. But like Arsenal last year, they haven't gone away. They've improved. They've got better. They fought well in the transfer market. You know, Declan Rice has been massive for them. Uh, Raya has been a good bit of business now, in my opinion. It looks like that was a good bit, good bit of business by Arsenal. And it, the proof's in the pudding, man. They're there. And now this game is huge. It's absolutely massive. For, and for my opinion, this game is massive for a more... It's bigger for Arsenal than it is Man City. Just for the fact that Man City, even if they lose, I still think they could win every single game after. And um, with Arsenal, they that, that I know uh, some Arsenal fans, the month of April is mad for them. You know, all the fixtures they got coming in this month of April is quite jammed. Some difficult away games as well. So, yeah, I think it's a massive for Arsenal. I think it's going uh, to be the game of the season. Could be the game of the season. It could equal the Liverpool um, City game from the other week, in my opinion. It's going to be a blockbuster for sure. That was a great game yeah, as well. I, that that one one at Anfield. Yeah, it was a crazy game, wasn't it? That Anfield game. Mm. Um, here's the thing: Arsenal have already beaten Man City twice this season. They beat them in the Charity Shield, and then they've beaten them at the, in the league. <clears throat> in both wins, I don't think Arsenal were a better team. But it doesn't matter, they won the game. Can Arsenal beat City three times in one season? Like when you say it like that, it sounds crazy, isn't it? But if you win, that will be the case. You'll have actually beaten Man City three times at the potential of playing them five. Now, this reminds me a lot of Liverpool Chelsea back in the early noughties when we just kept on having, I think we played Chelsea something like. Was it like 30 times in five seasons, Jamie, or something? Yeah, it was like man, they got to play Chelsea every other game. It was it was ridiculous. Yeah. Even when two English teams could be in this groups together, Liverpool and Chelsea got put in a group together in the Champions League. It was like we just kept playing them all the time. So five times in one season reminds me of that, but it's very unheard of to have to play. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty much looking at the moment like that will be the case. Obviously, there's a few Champions League games Real Madrid will have a lot to say about that. But it looks like it could be five times in one season. But as it stands, it's three. And if you win, you would have beaten them three times. Can Arsenal, James, beat City three times in the same season when you couldn't even beat them once in six years? Yeah, that's, you're right. <clears throat> they beat us three times last season. Um, they beat us in the F. They knocked yeah, us out the FA right. Cup. They came to the Emirates and did a job on us three one, and and then they destroyed us at the Etihad. Um, so it'd be nice to get some revenge, <laughs> get our own three in a row. But you know what? Um, when you put it like that, it feels a it feels so difficult. But then, obviously, football doesn't work like that. We've got the two done. What's happened before doesn't impact this game. This is now just a one off. You know, ninety minutes at the Etihad. I slightly disagree with you. I didn't think we were, I don't think we were like largely better than them in the two wins, but I, I didn't think they were better than us either. I, th I think, I actually thought they were quite boring games and not a lot really happened in them. Felt like both teams sort of nullified each other. Mm -hmm. I think Arsenal want to do a similar thing in this game. Um, I guess the bigger question is, do we need to win? So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of discourse online and Arsenal fans are getting a bit upset about it. And I've got to say, I, I actually agree with the discourse, which is, what you said, Jamie, if City lose, I think they can still win the title. I don't, it's not like, but if we lose, I feel like we've lost that ground. And Arsenal fans don't like hearing that because we're above them the table because we score more goals. We've conceded less because we've already beaten them this season. But the reality is you can't ignore that City have done it. That's why people are saying that about City because they've done it. Because they've proven time and time again that they can have these setbacks and still go on. And, and, you know, put those nine in a row and win it. Arsenal haven't proven it. Until we've proven it, people just won't think that of us. Um, if we were Liverpool, if we were Liverpool under Klopp who have done it, going into this game, I think people would say a draw's all right. But now that pressure is on us to actually try and win. I, I think a draw still is OK. But I understand that people will see this as an opportunity for Arsenal to grab control of a title race. 
because I don't think people think with the running we've got that we're going to go punch for punch all the way to the end. And I think that's probably fair, but we just need to prove that we can. Yeah, sure. James, can I ask you a question? Um, mm. With Arsenal, I, I've asked some other Arsenal friends of mine, has, has the international break come at the wrong time for Arsenal, this international break? Because your momentum, and Drift, you agree with this, your momentum was just going that way, weren't it? You're smashing teams, you're looking unbeatable, you're difficult to play. If the Man City Arsenal game came a week after and you didn't have this international break, for me, I think you smash them. Really? I wow. Think you smash them. So I think City are vulnerable this year. I, agree. I, I think City are quite vulnerable this year. And the, the moment you had, the players you got available right now and the way you're playing, I just feel like this international break. So I think it's 19 days since your last Premier yeah. League game when you play City. I just feel like momentum might just get in the way for you beating City. I don't know how you feel about it, but yeah, I just I just think you was on such a ride till the international break. So I, I would I would agree with you pre the Brentford win, which was our last game of the Premier League. I'd have said, you know, if we win this game against Brentford, I wish we could have him next week. We're on this roll. But actually we started to look tired against Brentford and Porto was a proper slog. Like we mm. had to really that do you know like um you know when things don't make sense in football like you know, the way we've been playing, our form, everything suggested that over two legs, we should have outscored Porto. But the fact that we hadn't got past the round of 16 for so long, the fact that they were difficult to beat, the fact that, you know, we were trying to prove something that we belonged in the last day. It, I think all of that took over and it became an utter slog. I, I might be talking from a fan's perspective, so I don't know about the players and whatever, but... From a fan's perspective, I was welcoming the break. I was like, yeah. we need the switch off period because because people forget that before our last break where we went to Dubai, you just knocked us out of the FA Cup. And that was our third defeat in a row where we lost at Fulham and West Ham, games that you really shouldn't be losing. And people say you can't lose these games if you're going to win a title. And that period of two months where we put nine Premier League wins in a row, we made it through to the course of the Champions League. It was great. And at times it looked easy, right? Five and a lap a half time against Sheffield United, all that. Five against Burnley, you know, four and a lap half time against West Ham. But I think I actually think it took a lot out of us. So I, I think the break was a good thing. But you're right. You know, essentially the question is, do we pick up momentum quickly into this game? Or do City come back with a refreshed mindset and a new appetite and they're ready to go again? Maybe. But I think if you offered me the two, I'd have taken the break because I think we did need it at the time, if I'm honest. Mm. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because the last time there was an international break, you're in the mud, and this yeah. time you were absolutely flying. So it's like, well, we're seeing you come back from being in the mud. Is it going to be the opposite this time? And then you yeah. go down, or you continue the momentum? Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's the fifty-fifty. Because last time I think it was a very welcome break for you. You just yeah. come off the back of yeah. two defeats and a draw, which is what seven points drop from nine. It looked yeah. like it had derailed your your title charge at that time. I still believe it would have been derailed if we'd have got a point or beat you at the Emirates in the league. I think you'd have been out of the league if we'd have won. That yeah, game. I agree, hundred percent. Like, straight away, you're back in it, and you just kept on going. Arguably, you had very favourable games, and that's not to take anything away from Arsenal, but especially the Crystal Palace one first back there in the mud at that time. Like it was like the perfect game for Arsenal to kick yeah. there you know kick the kickstart their thing and yeah you can only beat who's in front of you so what will it be like i think injuries are going to play a big part in this game as it stands we don't know who's playing possum we don't know who's doing the arson wenger alex ferguson thing back in the day when they always used to lie about a player and then all of a sudden be in the starting line and you'd be like i thought he said he was out i thought he said he was out um, because it's Saka and the Bruyne are the two at the moment, right? That they're like flirting with. Is he gonna play? Don't know. They'll both play. L let's be honest. Like I, I, I think this is a bit of kid kid on the tree or whatever you call it. Like yeah, I, agree. I think. But if, say for example, Saka can't play and the Bruyne plays, or if the Bruyne can't play and Saka plays. It could be the difference. I don't know how you lot feel in regards to that. I'll start with you, Jamie, on this. Like, do you see either of those two? Because to be fair to the situation at Anfield, De Bruyne got the assist for the goal, which was spectacular. But he was anonymous for the whole game and got dragged. It's like yeah. he literally, what, that set piece was all he did. And he's a master at that, so we know he can do that. 
And that was an unchallenged set piece that they'd worked on. But during the game, he got bullied, he got pushed around. And let's be honest as well, at his age now, with the injuries he's had, he's not going to be able to influence games like he used to. Could it be a blessing in disguise if De Bruyne is not playing for City and they have more of a bruiser in there to get about? Because Arsenal's midfield is where it happens. We know yeah. you can't let Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice get on the ball and start dictating. Could De Bruyne get pushed around a bit in that midfield and run around and could maybe playing Kovacic or Nunes or somebody else almost be a blessing to City? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Because, because this is a home game for City, I think mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. If you're away in that cauldron of noise at the Emirates at the moment, I think what happened at Anfield could happen there as well, where you know in the second half against Liverpool, obviously, our midfield really stepped onto their midfield, put them under pressure, put them under a press and kept them there, mm -hmm. didn't let go. And then the Anfield crowd, you know, helped. And they, City looked like they got swallowed up by it a little bit on the day. And that could happen at the Emirates as well, because the way the Emirates has been this season. But being, yeah, yeah. At, being at the Etihad, I think it might be a little bit different. Uh, if De Bruyne is fit, probably key for them. You know, Haaland, I don't. I know Haaland's top goal scorer, but I don't think he's been great this season when he's played. But Haaland does need De Bruyne for me. You know, he does need De Bruyne. Them two are, are magical together. So, hmm. Kovacic, uh, my thing with Kovacic, I don't know if he's got the legs to go against his Arsenal midfield. I think Bernardo Silva, don't like the guy, but he's just a genius of a footballer. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's 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 always been, if I looked at a sitting player, it's always been Bernardo Silva out of everyone. I've always rated the highest. I've always said, uh, I just don't like him personally, but as a footballer, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a he's top, man. He's top and he makes things tick over. He goes very underrated, in my opinion, because what De Bruyne does. But, it, you know, Walker, for me, if Walker's out, I actually think that's advantage City. Because I, I think Carl Walker, okay. I think Carl Walker's been pretty poor this season, and even I think even City fans are even talking about it as well. I've heard a lot of City fans talking about it. they're not quite happy with Carl Walker this season. Um, I think Carl Walker is now just a player that relies on his pace to get him out of a lot of trouble. Now, I don't think his defending is as great this year. Um, he looks a bit tired for me. You know, I see Luis Diaz, absolute, I know Luis Diaz is a quality footballer, but he absolutely destroyed him. Uh, and it I is think he's 34 now. I'm not yeah, going to lie. I think he's coming to the end of his... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think he's coming to the end of like... So I think Walker's out, I think that's more advantage to City because I think City will match what Arsenal do and go basically with four, four centre-backs across the, across the across the park. And be a bit more mm. solid in that way, but yeah, can yeah if De Bruyne is playing, man, De Bruyne in his home backyard is as dangerous as any footballer in the world for me. Yeah, that is true. I mean, can they go for it at the back though? Because the other doubt is Stones. Now, if it was if it was a real injury in the England game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, 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 I mean, it was so convenient. Really. He came off that like, precaution. Stones is quality. He's even, Stones for me is England's best centre back. I think he's, he, he's. They've been um, confirmed out. Sorry, Walker. Sorry to interrupt. Walk, walk, yeah, Walker and Stones. Well, Fabrizio Romano, and I think Pep said in. I think Pep might have said it as well. Um, but, oh, but, oh but, no, stop. so, oh, so they can't even go for the back with no stones. Report, then. So, yeah, reports have come out and Walker and Stones are out of the game. So what? Can she? So hold on. So who would it be? Ruben Ake, Kanji, Diaz, and Guavado. Oh, yeah, they could still go. Yeah, forward. still go with that back four, couldn't they? So basically, no, but who would those can play on the right, though? Which one would be the right back? Kanji, I would have thought. Kanji. Yeah, Kanji. Kanji doesn't have the pace to cope with Martinelli, though. Martinelli's not fit, is he? I'm not sure, actually. Oh, is Martinelli injured? Martinelli got a bad injury against Sheffield United, hasn't played since, but Arteta said that. There's a chance he'll be back. The same with Saka, same with Gabriel. But again, it's all is it mind games? Is it not? We 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 don't know. I mean, a kanji is interesting. Uh, Pep's used the kanji as his like Swiss Army knife against us a little bit. He's played him left back to go up against Saka. He's played him. I think he started him right back in the Champions League final against Inter. So he has used a kanji in a few different areas at times, purely because of his. I think his presence. He is just quite. He's a bit of a monster, isn't he? He's just 
you know, six foot, whatever, and, and dominates. But I know what you mean. Does he have that kind of raw pace over, over like a proper, a proper sprint distance? Maybe he does. I don't know. I haven't watched enough of him. Um, but we know Carl Walker's got the incredible recovery pace and we've always struggled against Carl Walker. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested what back, what defense they go with, unless they go for Rico Lewis, because the other thing is when, when John Stones plays, he steps into midfield. So that's how they get that overload there. When they've used Lu uh, Rico Lewis, they've used him a little bit like you guys use Trent or we use Zinchenko, where he'll he'll come in from fullback. So it'll be interesting to see whether he sees Rico Lewis as the answer. But I don't know. I I, I don't know what they're going to go with. I mean, part of me thinks Pep will cook up something, some back three system instead. You know, with I don't, you know, he'll just always he always tries something different, doesn't he? To to mix up and injuries might force him into that. Oh, there's an, another commenter saying. Um, Gomez is a left back that they could look to as well. So they have some options to be fair. Um, but I'm not sure who they'll go with. He, he, he hasn't seen any daylight though, has he? He's been in a basement for about 18 no, he, months. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. He doesn't even know what the weather is outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like when you've got one of them jobs where you work downstairs and you've got no windows and you don't know if it's raining, <laughs> sunny, sunny, you know. <laughs> he, he, he rings that bell every five minutes just for. The uh, pep giving some grub. He you does know, like you know. I don't even want lunch. Can I go and get some fresh air? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. but um, but yeah. So so just to finish up talking about the the game as an individual before we move on to the rest of it. Hmm. Me personally, I see an Arsenal win. No, Is that what really? I want? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arsenal. Um, have all the tools to be able to exploit what Jamie said before is a vulnerability um, defensively from City this season. I think when they play inferior teams, they absolutely bully them. But when they play a team on their same level, they do look vulnerable. And Liverpool should have absolutely put them to the sword. Now, Anfield yeah. and the Etihad are totally different. I get that. If it was at the Emirates, then you would probably feel a way more confident. But, like, honestly, I know, James, you probably did watch the game, but if you look at the chances during the game... I think based on the good chances, the game should have ended 6-3 to Liverpool. No, I say three good chances. We had about six good chances. We should have absolutely buried them. And we yeah, never sure. dominated City the way we did in the second half. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen City dominated, period, the way we dominated them in that second half. We should have absolutely buried them. And again, okay. the Etihad is different, but you've got all the tools to be able to do what we did take advantage of the high line, press them well in midfield, suffocate them, turn over the ball quickly and get at their back line. They've got their goalkeeper missing, which is their their avenue of, of out, which they rely on a lot. I know um, Thingy's not crap at distribution, but like, mm. come on, man, nobody is, is uh, what's his name? Do you know what I mean? Edison. So mm. and nobody's Edison. Edison is almost like having Kevin De Bruyne in goal when it comes to his distribution passing like it's insane how good he is of a, of a passer for a goalkeeper so they've got that missing as well which normally gets them out of a lot of trouble his passing ranges from the back Ortega again he's good at passing um but he's no you know I mean Edison so me personally I don't see City being able to keep Arsenal out so there won't be a clean sheet there 100% won't be a, a Man City clean sheet I'm going Two one Arsenal personally, I think it will be quite a close game. But I, I think, and here's the thing, I think Arsenal take the lead first as well. I actually think they take the lead first. Do I want an Arsenal win? My head tells me yes. My heart tells me no. Common sense is telling me I want the Arsenal win because they have harder fixtures with more chance of dropping points. City have yeah. to have somebody. Yeah. To points off them because Liverpool aren't going to be able to be perfect and they've only got Tottenham after Arsenal that I think can take points off them so that's eight games where they're probably guaranteed to win so for mm -hmm. that reason common sense using my head Arsenal need to win this game my heart doesn't want Arsenal to win this game because that makes them serious makes them favourites and I can't see Arsenal win the league no offence James you're one of the no, good I ones <laughs> I actually would want you to experience victory but the rest of your fan base, the internet, 
oh, the world will end, bro, if Arsenal win the league. Like, let's just keep it a buck, yeah? You're not we'll wrong. We'll have to go and take it to Mars. Like, seriously, Jamie, I don't know how much you got, bro. We're going to have to do a GoFundMe to leave the earth for at yeah. least three yeah, months. It, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be serious, man. Like I said, I would like Arsenal to win the league, but, you know, being a London boy, you know, I'm surrounded by him. So yeah, he's just you, you can't get yeah. away. Like, I could turn I could turn social media off for like a day and I I don't know a city fan anyway, so it don't matter. Do you know what I mean? So I mean, Elon Musk will actually probably have to put out a tweet saying, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> Twitter has crashed due to Arsenal winning the league. There's too much going on. We can't keep yeah. up with it. Uh, you know, we'll down. have to Yeah, we'll have to shut this down. <laughs> the uh, servers can't handle it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, so, I, I I look at everything. It's got it's. <sighs> Arsenal always start very quick. They start very very quick in their games, and I think if you do that against City, you can get on top of them quite quickly because they are vulnerable. I don't know what it is that they're playing with more PMP this season, ain't they? Power and pace, you know, and they're trying to defend one on one at the back a bit like Liverpool do. But I don't think their centre backs are as good as Liverpool at doing that one on one defending. I think Ruben Diaz gets a bit, he can't quite do it. You know, I think Ake is probably the best at it in that defence at doing that. Um, Akanji, I'm not quite sure on in a way. So, yeah, I, that's where I think Arsenal can have a real big advantage because when you get Odegaard in them areas of the pitch, in between the lines there, you know, hovering around in between, you know, the midfield and the defence just there, getting in them areas. And I think De Bruyne will be doing the same for City as Odegaard will be for Arsenal. And it's all about if Arsenal can get that ball into Odegaard, who can get it and move it out into the attacking wide areas quickly and attack, which will be full-backs of City, but they're going to be centre-back. So, you know, especially with Saka going against probably, you know, Gerrard on that side of the pitch and getting Odegaard in them areas. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting in what they do. And Declan Rice is going to be obviously very important the rice Rodri battle, a lot of people go to chat about. But Declan, in the last few weeks, has stepped in more into that number eight position where Jorginho is now sort of sitting. It looks like that's what Arteta has wanted from Rice, but he wanted it from Party probably, but he's not been available for you. Yeah, if they can get on top of them early, I just, I don't, I, just, I know our Arsenal guys set up. I just don't know how City are going to set up for this game because Pep does do some weird things at times. Mm. And, you know, you feel but, like Harden will play, you feel like Foden will play. Bernardo, Kevin, Rodri. It's who he goes on the left. I've not been a big fan of um, the left winger for C. What's his name? He's gone out right in my head. Um, well, Do- Doku Alvarez. Doku, Doku. I've not been a big fan of Doku this season. He runs a lot. He looks threatening. But then he sort of just fouls at the end of things. And I think you can keep him quite quiet, especially uh, Ben White has been very good on that right-hand side for Arsenal this season. So, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like Arsenal go win, and that's going to upset me. But yeah, I think you go win. I will say, I will say, jumping in there, that you know, the thing about this Arsenal team, and I know I'm pouring cold water on what is obviously some very nice kind of preview thoughts about Arsenal, but I think we also got to remember that this is Saliba's first time at the Etihad. Um, David Rye's first time in an Arsenal shirt at the Etihad, although he has actually won there with Brentford. Kivio has looked great, but is he up to this level? We're going to find out. Jorginho, I thought against you guys, he ran the game. He was brilliant at the Emirates in the, in the, in the league game. But I think, again, at home, when you're compact, you know, and, and, and you're, you're in control. But what happens when City have a bit of the ball? You know, does Jorginho and that lack of pace and physicality, does he get walked through by Kevin De Bruyne or a Rodri or a Nunes? And I, I love, I think Jorginho's been great for us, but those are his flaws. You can't do anything about. He'll never be able to do anything about those. Um, Declan Rice, really big game. How does he prepare this? Love? You're saying if we find Erdegaard in the pockets, I agree, but what if we don't? Erdegaard can be anonymous in these games. He can also be mesmerising. But that's just the nature of tens. That's the nature of KGs in the comments says James have some chest. Don't worry, I did earlier. I did earlier, but I'm just saying as well that I'm gonna troll you, bro. I'm gonna troll. <laughs> but, uh, I'm I'm excited. Look, the, 
honestly on the show and chest front I, I am excited i'm really it's the first time i'm going there thinking we can actually do something and if you offered me a point before like if you say right now don't play the game take the point and move on i wouldn't take it i want to i want to i want to play the 90 and see what it's about because i think we can do something but i just think at the same time i'm gonna learn so much about these players like how much are they really ready for that step? it's one thing you're doing at the emirates don't get me wrong I, any, I think any Premier League side can win a game against anyone when they're at home. I just think it's the nature of the Premier League. I mean, maybe not Sheffield United, with all due respect. <laughs> but but generally, like when Wolves beat City earlier this season, I know everyone's like, oh, what a shock. Yeah, it's like, but is it that shocking? They've got good players and it can happen and City can have an off day. So can we go to the Etihad, though, and perform the way we have done in the previous two games? Big questions. I think we can, but that's a big, that's a big ask. Do you feel like Arsenal have to win this game because of your fixtures coming up? Because if I look at Liverpool, Liverpool are at home to Brighton and Sheffield United in their next two Premier League games. And as Liverpool fans, we probably feel like we should win both of them games, especially being at home. Do you you feel like Arsenal have to win this? Because as you say, as being, you know, you went up against City last season, you got to a certain point and and City then took over and... You know, Arsenal must have learnt something from that. But now Liverpool are back and they've been used to going against City for the last two years. So do you feel as an Arsenal fan that this actually, maybe a draw isn't good enough in a way because you see Liverpool's fixtures, you know what City can do. Do Arsenal have to win this game just to go, we're there. We've beaten Liverpool. We've beaten City now twice. We've done a double over them. No, we're there. This is the confidence to go go right for us now. We can actually win this league. Mm, it's so difficult because obviously, obviously if we do I think people would really sit up and take notice and people would think wow they're very serious now four games against City and Liverpool in the league and they haven't lost a single one that, that would be you know that would that would be big I don't think we have to win this game to win the title I know a draw I think you'll beat Brighton I know that puts it back in Liverpool's control I actually think the days of these kind of long you know 13 match winning runs are gone. I I, I think I think that Liverpool side under Klopp and that Pep side, you know, not the Centurion. Well, it was the Centurion who started it, but then the, the, the team the year after that. And then, of course, what you guys did when you were chasing the quadruple. I just think that was like a level that I don't actually think we'll ever see in the Premier League again in terms of consistency and the football and everything. So I, I think... The road we both did in that season. Unbelievable. I, I, I think... Liverpool drop points in two more games. City, I, I think Arsenal, City and Liverpool all drop points in two more games each um, in the final 10. I don't think anyone's getting more than eight out of 10 wins between now and the end of the season. Um, I don't know why I think that. I just, yeah, you guys still have to go to Everton. You still have to go to Old to old Trafford. You, know, you couldn't, I'm not saying they're the two hardest places to go, but you couldn't have asked for two teams that want to stop you more than those two. Uh, we got to go to Tottenham and Man United. So, you know, that'll probably be the same for us. Um, mm. And unfortunately, City's run is a little bit more ideal. Um, but I agree. I actually think they've looked the most vulnerable of the three. I agree. I don't think they look the same as they did last season. I think there is there is like a lack of concentration. Their their results against the big six this year aren't that great. You know, they, they were... They were battering Tottenham. They draw that game 3-3. Three, three. They they score in the 90th minute at the bridge. They end up drawing that game 4-4, four, four, giving away a penalty. They drew with Chelsea at the Etihad about a month and a bit ago. Like th- These are really strange results for them. Um, so, yeah, they have Smash United, but then, you know, everyone has. Do you think, I, do you think City yeah. of people have worked at, had to play, that City are a bit more predictable this season than they have been in previous years? You know, because you've got Haaland up top and most of everything's going to go through Haaland because that's just natural, ain't it? You've got, you've got that beast up top. You're going to naturally go to him. You're going to try and play him in whenever you can get him and hold up the ball. You know, do you think they've just gone a little bit, maybe a bit too predictable? But because they've got superstar footballers all over the pitch, mm. they're still extremely hard to beat. But there is a bit more predictability about City than there has been in previous years, maybe. Uh- I think that's natural. I think naturally teams are going to figure out as well what they're doing and all that. Um, I, I I don't want to yeah. diminish the efforts of Liverpool. I oh, know he's not happy with me. I love you, KG. Um, I, I, I don't want to diminish the hard work of Liverpool and Arsenal. I feel a little bit like 
it's it's a it's a desire thing for City. They've just won the treble. They've won three in a row. I look at a lot of the goals they've conceded. They feel like lapses of concentration. They feel like there's a mental fatigue. True. If City have regrouped, got themselves together in this two week break and gone, what are we doing? Like we go again, we go again, we go again. I think they'll win the league. I think they will just like I think if they want it the way they have done in previous years, I just feel like there's there's a percentage, there's an edge missing about City this season. And they right, they're and they're still in the thick of it, right? And they're in control of their destiny to a degree. But yeah, I I don't know. And I and I know that makes it sound like, oh well, if Arsenal or Liverpool win it, then I'm saying, well, it's because City didn't want it as much. It's not so much that, but but you get what I'm trying to say. Doesn't don't yeah, you look okay. at them and feel like there's a there's a I, I look at some of the goals they've conceded, I'm like, that looked so easy. What, what why did that happen? You know when they smashed yeah. United 3-1 the other yeah. day? They, they, they smashed they, they smash United. Sorry, KG. Rashford could have had an hat trick in that game in the first half. That's it. United yeah, still had yeah. chances. Yeah. Like, and, and not even just chances, they had openings. They had moments where I'm like, if that ball's better, Rashford's thrown goal. And yeah. I and that is so unlike City. So something tells me they're more vulnerable. But again, if they, oh, if they let's get, just quickly, I mean, it's been done before, but let's just quickly go through the fixtures of all the three teams then, just yeah, to say yeah, whether, yeah. We, whether this is a myth or whether it's fact that Arsenal do have the harder running. So Arsenal's fixtures are, they've got City this weekend, obviously, then they've got Luton at home, then they've got Brighton away, then they've got a massive Bayern Munich first leg. Sandwiched in between that is Aston Villa at home. Then they've obviously got the away leg against Bayern Munich. Nobody knows what that will be like based on the first leg as well. So that's always just tricky about the second leg. Then three days after that, they come back to Wolves away. Now, that's real tricky because if Wolves um, have proven anything, it's at home, they can scout the big boys. They've beaten City this season, right? At yep, home, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, them. Then Arsenal have got Chelsea at home three days after that. Then they've got Tottenham away four days after that. And then they have Bournemouth at home six days after that. But they will be Champions League semi-final sandwiched in there if Arsenal make it past Bayern Munich, which is either Man City or Real Madrid, which again is going to take a massive mental strain on the squad. And then you finish the season with Man United away and Everton at home. Now, it's Liverpool's right. finished. <laughs> No, no, let's do them all and then we'll discuss it because I'm not going to lie. James's face was just getting more and more worried as I was reading them out. So yeah. Liverpool's is, we've got Brighton at home this weekend. Then we've got Sheffield midweek. Then we've got Manu away. Four days after Manu away, we've got Atalanta at home in the first leg of the European. Sandwiched in between the Atalanta games is Palace at home. Just back after the Atalanta, three days after, is Fulham away. Um, three days after Fulham away is Everton away. Three days after Everton away is West Ham away. Um, seven days, and then that would be where the Europa League semi-final will be sandwiched in if we make it through. And then a week later, we have Tottenham at home. A week later, which will obviously have the other leg of the Europa League, um, if I'm not mistaken, we will have Villa away. And then we end the season with Wolves at home. Now, it sounds harder when I read out Arsenal's fixtures. Pause. But what I think people are actually failing to understand is with a Europa League game sandwiched in between here somewhere as well. Fulham away, Everton away, West Ham away in a week, Jamie. Seven-day period That's we have to play. And those are mug places to go. The derby is obviously the Everton game. Fulham are, have scalped big boys home and away this season. Yeah, And West Ham on their day can beat anybody at their ground, especially. Yep. Is it a myth? Like, and obviously, let's both let's all try and take our bias out of this. Is it a myth? Arsenal's got the harder fixtures. Um, they got it's because they got to play Man City. I think that's what because they got to play Man City. They've got to play Tottenham. Mm -hmm. They got to play Chelsea. So I would say they probably have. I put it this way: I think Liverpool and Arsenal win all their home games for the rest of the season. 
then it comes down on the away games. You look at Liverpool's three in a row away from home in that eight-day period. That's where, for me, Liverpool either win or lose the Premier League. Then three away games. Everton will try and do everything in their power. <laughs> you know, to, to stop Liverpool, obviously. I'm not told that, Jamie, because let's face it, if they've secured their Premier League status on the last game of the season, they yeah. roll over and Arsenal to scratch their belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Like, Fulham, Fulham's a weird one by the time we play Fulham because Fulham might not really have anything to go too much for in the Premier League. So they might be thinking that it might be better and people might think it, it's it, it's a West Ham game. It's actually the way it all depends how West Ham do against Bayer Leverkusen. If West Ham beat Bayer Leverkusen by the time we play them, yeah, or look like they go go through. I think West Ham might put everything into the Europa League, so I think that game might be more winnable than it looks. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think for both teams, I think Arsenal, Liverpool win all their home games. Tottenham at home, any team coming to Anfield, I'm comfortable with. You know, we've had the best. Jamie, yeah, um, though, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with it, man. Time, uncomfortable bro. With it. Uncomfortable with it. Yeah, that's kind of the things thing. Like, like, I think under Klopp, Tottenham have got three draws at Anfield and two of them were in title race seasons. Like, they're, they're, they're pretty good at coming to Liverpool and getting a draw, you know? <laughs> I think Liverpool can afford the draw I'm against Man United and Arsenal. Uh, sorry, I think Liverpool can afford the draw against Man United and, uh, and the Spurs, maybe, because, you know, with City and Tottenham and Chelsea have played for Arsenal as well and City have got some couple of difficult games as well to play. As James said, I think I think all three teams are going to drop points from now to the end of the season. I don't see, mm. say, Arsenal, Arsenal win every game from here or City win every game from here or Liverpool win every game from here. I just don't see it happening. I just mm. think the teams beneath us are far better than they have been in previous years as well. So they're <laughs> able to take points off top teams. So, yeah, I think the fixtures are pretty much almost even, if you ask me. Because I think all the teams will probably get maximum points in their home games. It's the away games where the titles are going to be won and lost. I'll read out the City fixtures just to mm. be fair. City got um, the easiest so end. They got the easiest oh, end. Oh, they've got Arsenal this weekend at home. Um, then they've got Villa at home uh, three days later in the midweek game. Then they've got Palace away, who are a bit of a bogey team for City, to be fair. Mm. And then they've got Real Madrid. Sandwiched in between Real Madrid is Luton. That, 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 that's that's at home though, so they'll they'll walk that. That's a very easy game for them to have middle. Whereas Arsenal's got Villa, which is actually a tough one. So oh, Arsenal. Oh, drift. Drift. Also, mm. don't forget, also, don't... City have got more time in between their games than Liverpool and Arsenal do between their games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true as well. Yeah, for some yeah. weird reason. Yeah. For some, ooh, yeah, <laughs> imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> having it seem like it's easier for them. I wonder why. Yeah. Um, then they've got Roma, obviously the second leg of the Real Madrid game. Um, and then the Tottenham game now has been postponed because they're obviously in the semi-final of the FA Cup. So they play the FA Cup instead um, against Chelsea, which could be a distraction. Then they've got Brighton away five days after that. Then they've got Forest away three days after that. Then they've got Wolves at home on the fourth. Then they've got Fulham away on the 11th and they finish their season at home to West Ham. Obviously, if they go through sandwiched in roundabout, the Forest Wolves Brighton era will be the semi final um, of the Champions League. And then obviously, they'll have an FA Cup final sandwiched in somewhere. I don't, I'm not sure if the FA Cup has gone back to being after the season finishes or if it's during yeah, the game. Yeah, I can't remember either. Bit, it's the last sometimes. game of the season, I think. Yeah, it's the last game. Oh, okay. But I think when you read that off, you think Brighton away and Fulham away are the two that I would probably say are possible banana skins for City. Tottenham and away. And Tottenham away. Yeah, yeah and know. Tottenham away. But again, these are just possible banana skins other than Tottenham because I think Tottenham's a legit chance they could lose it. Brighton and Fulham is more of a, oh, okay, it is a difficult place to go, possibly. History would say not, though, because they seem to win against those two away all the time. So, yeah. 
it's City have definitely got the easier run, right? If, if, we're, yeah. if we're looking at the, the yeah. fixtures remaining. Yeah. So they again, got, common they, sense. They got, they got, Common sense says Arsenal should win this game or Arsenal need to win this game because common sense says Arsenal is one of only two teams left who can take points off of City, whereas there's about three or four teams that could take points off Liverpool and Arsenal. So, James, maybe for the good of, of everybody, we need that W, bro. <laughs> we, we need, I'm more yeah. than happy to provide it. Yeah, I mean, it's easy. Just go down to the Yeti Yard and win, bro. That's it. That's all you've got to do, bro. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we weren't really trying before. Now we'll try and we'll just get the three points. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. Yeah. I think what... um, it, makes it, it, it makes it incredibly compelling if Arsenal win at the Etihad because no one would write City off, and rightly so. They still wouldn't write them off. Liverpool would then feel like, We've got a gap on City and we are the experienced ones who have done it with Jurgen Klopp. We have been the ones who have taken advantage of City slip-ups. No one else has. But then Arsenal will be the ones who did it, who went to the Etihad and won. Like So everyone would have their their reason. Whereas I think the draw doesn't change too much. I think if City win, oh, I hate saying this, we wouldn't be out. But I think if City win, I think people would look at it and go... All right, so Liverpool would beat Brighton, so we'd fall three behind you, we'd be two behind City. Of course, that's not done and dusted, but with the games we've got as well, I think people would just go, yeah, we're looking at the other two. And that's crazy, you know, that's crazy we're saying that. If, if Liverpool weren't in the hunt, losing at City, and then we'd go two points behind them, I'd go, all right, that can happen, but, you know, just be ready for any sort of slip-up. But there's three, and that makes every... Every point dropped, even more precious. So I think an Arsenal win makes the title race the most compelling it can possibly be. Mm. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, Jamal, to your point, I did say Fulham is one of the tricky games for City away. Like, I literally just said it. Like, I think based on their history, they'll probably win it. But yeah, I did. it is a tricky game for them. Tottenham and Fulham. And I guess Brighton... The thing is, Bright, the way Brighton play plays into City's hands. That's the problem. As good of a team as Brighton are, they literally play into City's hands because they play Pep light. That's basically what they do. So it's almost like the styles makes fight argument. Like Brighton don't have the style to beat City. That's the problem. It has to be a Fulham or a Brentford or a team that's dogged and makes them work for it and bullies them and fights. Brighton play pretty football. They'll go up against them you know, and try and outplay him. And that's not happening. So that's why the Brighton one, I'm not so sure Brighton away is is a problem for C. Um, so if we look at the situation for where it is now, and hopefully we'll, we'll be re, um, visiting this a few more times throughout the season. It's a show I want to continue where, you know, every few weeks we revisit it, see where we're at at the time. So this won't be the last time we have this conversation. But at this point here with 10 games to go, guys, if I asked you to put your mortgage on which team you would think would be most likely to win based on what we just read out, the fixtures, how it's going to go, history, everything. James, I'll start with you on this one. What what do you think your heart would tell you to go with at this, from this point? City. City. Yeah, look, I wish I could yeah. sit here with Chess and go, we scored the most goals, we can see the least, we're top of the league, blah, blah, blah. it'll be us, but... You're coming. You're talking about a side that I do think have the better run in. They have the opportunity at home to take points off a direct rival, and have done it for the three seasons before, and are the treble winners, and have the best players, and have. I was about to say the best manager, but I don't think there's anything between Klopp and Pep. Um, I'm not just saying that because I'm on Klopp TV. I actually believe that. Um, so <laughs> I think you would have to. I, I personally go City. I personally go City. If I'm if I'm putting my mortgage on it, <laughs> then yeah, it's City for me. Then, then you go City, Jamie. What what would you say? I know you're I know you're a you're a gambling yeah. man. Um, oh, I think it might still be City because I think they're gonna get knocked out by Real Madrid in the Champions League. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I, I think Real Madrid are going to knock them out in Champions League. So I have a feeling that might happen too, by the way. Yeah, so I think City will go all in for this. Because if City have looked vulnerable in the Premier League and they're going to play a team like Real Madrid, looking vulnerable, I don't think it would be like last season when they destroyed them, personally. 
I think this is a different Real Madrid now. So, yeah. Is it really, though, based on their injuries, guys? Just quickly, like, Real Madrid have got a lot of their key players missing, you know? Yeah, I, I didn't know I that. Think, <laughs> I think I've heard, I've heard um, some, most of them Gabby back, so... I think yeah, but like Militao, for example, he's coming back from an ACL. I mean, how ready is he even going to be? Do you get what I mean? Like Courtois out for the rest of the season. Um, yeah, but they've been doing bits of that Courtois for a, a while now, haven't they? So, uh, and Militao, mm. I don't rate anyway. So, I mean, I, I just look at I, I, I look at I look at um, City, and I feel like the, Liverpool for me are going to be less tired for the first time in a long time game towards the end of the season just because we're getting a lot of our players back so they're not being playing um yeah. so we can be a bit more fresher so we Which can is why i said rotate. the fa cup defeat was a blessing but everybody yeah we can it. sort of rotate the squad a little bit and in in europa and in the premier league and keep some players fresh now they're coming back we don't have to rely on the kids but I, it's so hard betting against city because they've been there and done it and pep just gets a bit between his teeth don't he but I don't know, man. If City beat Arsenal, I think he can just... I don't know if you can stop them. I, I literally don't know if you can stop them if they beat Arsenal. Because City are looking at it and go, right, that's, that's our hardest game this season I'm done with. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, we're just going to go on and win. If they get the draw and Liverpool win their next two games, they have that little bit of point advantage against City. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go... No, for, stuff all this bollocks. I'm going Liverpool. I'm going Liverpool. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? Why not? Just like how it is. I know. I love. We got we got four home games in that in that we got three home games in our next four matches. You know. I know. We, we like, got away games in a row, though, bro. Yeah, but they three. A... The thing is, though, then three home games in our next four matches, we should all should win them. I think we should we should win them games if we want to win the league. Let's be serious here. And. And four, if you include the Europa League game, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, exactly. And if City do draw against Arsenal, that, that gives us a little gap where we can afford one draw maybe in them three away games and win the other two. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm going for it. Why not? Why not? I'm Liverpool boy. That's back our no, own. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Back our own, man. Back our own. I'm sick um, of City cheating. Let's go. <laughs> um, there's, you know, At least you know, when you're looking... do it the right way, by the way. At least we born Arsenal do it this the right way, the old fashioned way. We yeah. can agree on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, know when you, you, know, you know, when you try and envision what the future might be like with regards to football, and, you, and, and you're like, can I imagine myself? Like, that's, that's why I never believed in the quadruple because I could never imagine myself celebrating it. Um, can I envision celebrating winning the Premier League? I don't know if I can envision it yet. I just don't. Um, I would probably back City from this point as well, although there's an eerie feeling that's starting to build up that Arsenal are going to win the league. Oh. Like a really eerie feeling. Yeah, there's a really eerie feeling. And if they do what I think they're going to do, which is win on Sunday... Put like this, I'm not even bottling it in terms of I did ask you a lot from this point and the City game hasn't happened. If Arsenal beat City, 100% Arsenal are going to win the league for me. that That's how I, I think if Arsenal beat City, they're winning the league. I think the momentum, the belief will just, will just carry them on and their trajectory will continue. And I think the only place Arsenal might drop points will be away at Spurs. That's how it seems if they beat City. If they lose to City, then there's a possibility that a bit of nerves might kick in. The Bayern Munich game could be a tricky one all of a sudden. Because at the moment, I think you're going to smoke Bayern as well. But if you lose to wow. see, confidence might take a knock. And then Villa in between could make it a bit techy. You could draw with Villa randomly because you didn't beat Bayern at home. And now you're worried about the away legs. So there's so many variables that can obviously be changed. But I think if you, beat, if you beat City, I think the momentum and the confidence is all there. And So I'm going to go City from this point. But I'll change that to Arsenal if Arsenal beat City. That 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 that's how that's how I put it. It's not it's nice being talked about in this way. I'm not used to it. <laughs> but um, you know what? Like we've earned it through good results and everything. This is the big one now. This is this is the big one. All eyes on what we do at the Etihad. Um, I don't think 
any results going to change what people think of City significantly because they've proven it time and time again. So, so the pressure is on us to see if we can live up to people's ex- people's expectations. I think Bayern is going to be really tricky. I think the City trip is massive, very tricky. Mm. But it, you, you, we ask for these, man. Like, wh- why do we celebrate getting? Well, not celebrate, but why are we happy when we get in the top four? Because we want, want to be a part of these games. Like, why do we celebrate big signings coming? Spending 100 million pounds on rice because we hope that it's going to pay dividends in this very game. We spend 100 million pounds on a player, you know, thinking oh, he might be anonymous in this one. So we've got to believe and feel we're ready. Um, we've earned our right to be here. And uh, yeah, this is the most exciting two months I've been a part of as a fan ever because i became a fan in 2006 champs league finals my first game call me glory hunter if you want <laughs> my dad's an arsenal fan. <laughs> and, um, and then i thought i was a curse on the club because we then didn't win anything for the next seven eight years after that and i still haven't seen a league title but this is definitely the most excited i've ever been as an arsenal fan so i just hope the the players do the fans sort of proud in in feeling that way because I, th- I think we deserve to feel that way so let's see it's exciting for all of us, yeah, but, uh, I, I hear that as well. I hear that as well. But it's a it's thing drift. So I was just thinking about them while you're talking. And so say say City beat Arsenal, yeah. Say City beat mm. Arsenal. We beat Brighton. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I know Brighton's a hard game for Liverpool. It always yeah, is. Yeah, but yeah. We should scrape a victory. I don't care if it's a dodgy two-one. Yeah. As long as we win, I don't care. All right. So we win that game. We're three points clear at the top before City and Arsenal play. Say City win, we stay one point above City, but three points above Arsenal. If it's a draw, it's two points above City, two points above Arsenal. What one would you rather? So there's no Arsenal win in the equation. It's just either a City win. Oh uh, yeah, win. well I'm just thinking like if City, because we're all talking about it'd be better if Arsenal won, but Arsenal's momentum is crazy, and momentum yeah. takes you to special places, man. It really does. Yeah, really no, does. I hear you. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to work it out if it actually we get um, that point above City, where they could still got to play Tottenham yet away from home, and a cut and a couple of difficult away games, and then a, a walk away no, as well. No, 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 only thing is, Jamie, I think you slightly got the points wrong. I think we'd be three points ahead of City if they drew, not two. I think. No, I think no, it'd be we're two one of... point in front of them, ain't we? We're one point in front of them, ain't we? But obviously, we're basing it on we'd go four ahead before the game because we'd beat Brighton. Yeah, so you're yeah, saying yeah. if we yeah, beat yeah, Brighton yeah. and go four ahead, yeah, so we'd be yeah. three ahead of City, two yeah. ahead of Arsenal. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I think you need more than... I think you need a two-game cushion on City, though, Jamie, and that's one of the reasons why I'm slightly more in favour of the Arsenal win. I think if they're four points behind us, that means that we have to drop points in two games, which gives us a slight cushion... Whereas if they're only three points behind, that's just one because they'll probably score more goals than us between now and the end of the season. Yeah. So that's the only, you know what I mean? That's the only slight issue. I think no. a draw. I think a draw is the best result for you guys, yeah. just because because we are ultimately talking about the best three teams in the league, and if they're not facing each other, you're asking someone who's lower in the league to do a job against one of the other three, and this is a, this is a situation which you can obviously not guarantee, but like. This is a situation where a draw, both have dropped points, and you'll be ahead of the pack. And I think you you would want that locked in. Now, I actually think, like I said, that more points will be dropped. Um, and we do have to go to Brighton and Tottenham and United. Difficult. And Wolves. And we host Villa. It's nasty. As you've seen, Chelsea will come to the Emirates doing everything to stop us. But all those teams are below us. So we would go in believing we can win even if we never have done it in this running before like that, I, I just think you'd, I think you'd want the point each so that you can just take advantage of both dropping points. I think that would just be the best thing for you mm. personally. Yeah. Yeah. I do hear the logic behind that hundred percent. I, I want to beat I want to beat sitting to the league by one point. See how they like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would, I would you know take it on mean? goal difference. I would take it on yeah. anything. I would just give me that title. <laughs> No, I do it on points deducted. If the, the Premier word, League the come best, in and four points, that'll be fine. The best scenario as well, Jamie, as well, to really rub salt in the wounds. We go into the um, last game of the season one point ahead. So they know that a draw or a loss wins them the league. 
We let Wolves go 2-0 ahead. They're winning their game at home to West Ham. Their fans are celebrating. They're getting ready for the crowd invasion. And then Liverpool, Darwin Nunes, hat-trick. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Liverpool come back. Beat Wolves 3-2. Last five minutes, we scored a winning goal. Nunes confirms himself as a Liverpool legend. And Man City are in the mud. That is what I'll, I want. I'll go one step further. I'll go one step further on that. I'd love it. It's two all. Full official puts up six minutes of injury time. Liverpool get a, a penalty in the seventh minute of injury time to win. <laughs> just for the fume. Just for I just want, just for the upset. Just for the upset and the fume. Yeah, you know, I'd love that. I'd oh. love that. No, Jamie, I'll go even one better then. Let's have a Man United Brighton scenario. Ref <laughs> blows the whistle. They think they <laughs> won the league. VAR. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. oh no, we gotta go back. There's actually been a penalty incident here. Uh, we'll go VAR to give a penalty. Back. VAR gives a penalty after City are champions. That would be unbelievable. Yeah, City that, that would be hilarious. They're all VAR. celebrating it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one right there. But yeah, just you know what? Just last, last question before we finish, because things just keep coming to my head. This one's more for James, I'll say. Do you think a Liverpool win against Brighton an hour before you guys would change anything about your game? No, I don't. I, I no. don't because because I expect you to win. The players should be totally expecting you to win. If you draw, then I actually think that makes the assignment slightly... I think actually relieves the pressure. I think if you guys draw and you're only a point ahead of us and we say we lose at the Etihad... Which would be a bad result either way, but but suddenly it's City are two points ahead, Liverpool are one point ahead. So actually, we've got a really difficult game away, and we're still within, you know, one game of. I, that's a very losing mentality way of answering it. But like, I actually think suddenly no one's gained ground on us on over a bad weekend. You know, well, not massively, let's say. If you draw and we get a point of the Etihad, will we come out of the weekend still top of the league? I. I, I'm expecting you guys to win. I, I'm expecting by this weekend, end of this weekend, Liverpool are top of the league. Um, but I, I would still feel okay about that if it means we got a draw at the Etihad and we've played well and we've come out of there, you know, very competitive and we take the fight down the road. It'd be difficult, but I'd feel okay about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm still worried about that Brighton game. There will be a preview for that coming at some point between now and Sunday as well, people. So, Big up for that. Um, I'm waiting for that. But look, it's been an absolute pleasure, boys. I'm going to wrap it up there. And then we'll revisit this in about maybe two weeks' time and we'll see where we're at. We'll see. And hopefully we'll have a city representation for that one as well. So it'll make it feel a little less like we're being biased. Um, big up uh, riding shotgun as well. Um, it says Arsenal face teams with the most points games out of the three. Yeah. Points oh, as in like yeah, the yeah. teams that are higher up the league Basically. kind of things. So they're harder teams to play against. Okay, yeah, I get what you yeah. mean. Um, yeah, wish us luck. Yeah. Yeah. And pressure, yeah. pressure, does <laughs> pressure does weird things to teams. You know, City, Liverpool and Arsenal should probably, on be looking at it, win most of their games. But when you come to the pressure under the season, it does weird things on you, man. You, lo you drop yeah. points where you can drop points. That's it. it. It it can work in your favour, and what I mean by that is like we went we went to Liverpool last season. You guys weren't having a good season. We were two 0 up. We managed to throw that away. We went to West Ham, not having a great season, lingering fourteenth, thirteenth, two 0 up. We threw it away. Then we hosted Southampton, who were in horrendous form, and we were three one down. End up drawing that game three three. Like you you could argue that okay, Anfield is never easy, but you could argue that actually that wasn't you know, particularly difficult run. We should have come out with maybe seven points out of nine. We came out of three, two, of which we were in winning positions. Like, I, I actually think it can work in your favour that when we're playing Villa at home, we're not going to take our eye off the ball against that just because we got by in the week after. If we had Sheffield United at home, maybe we would. So I, I do think we're just in a stage of the season, not that I've ever really been a part of it, but we're in a stage of the season where I just feel like ultimately, actually, it's all the same task. Keep winning, whether you're home, away versus fourth versus 16th. Like the pressure is there. And if you're the better team, you're expected to go do it, whether it's one nil or four nil. So mm. big pressure. No, that's very true, man. Um, so people, I hope you've enjoyed. 
I just we're only on 147 likes people come on man we've got special guests in the building we've been having great conversation come on guys smash that like button man you guys need to like understand that youtubers don't really like just say it for the sake of it it really does help with the algorithm it pushes the video out it recommends it to people who haven't seen you and we can grow the community so you know i think it goes over people's heads a bit they think oh it's just a like but like it really does matter um anything over a thousand really starts to push the algorithm that's why most times we ask at least for a thousand guys so please do smash that like button on your way out subscribe if you're new um jamie james it's been an absolute pleasure boys uh just quickly boys let the people know where they can find you as well just so they can come and um subscribe to you guys and stuff um oh thank you very kind um so i'm on AFTV and i have a, uh, a channel where i talk about arsenal in a slightly different way as well um just called james b um i think the at is james james's gooniverse james gooniverse so check out if you fancy more arsenal content I'm going to put them in the title in the description Thank as well. You. So, um, and you guys, and Jamie, see, mind Phillips. That, Jamie Phillips football chats, all Liverpool, everything and everything Liverpool, guys. Uh, so, if you like that kind of thing, come over and have a, have a look, see if it's your kind of thing, guys. Yeah, and it's brilliant content, guys. So, make sure you go and, and subscribe to the two boys. Um, and yeah, we'll revisit this and we'll see where we're at. And at that point, we'll know whether there was an Etihad win for Arsenal. We'll be closer to the Champions League game. It's all going to start getting tasty. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, but big up, everyone. Until then, smash the like button. As I said, subscribe if you're new and we'll catch you on the other side. Oh, and have a happy Good Friday as well, everyone. Yeah, happy um, Easter. Yeah. yeah, man. I'm about to kill some fish and relax now. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, not literally, I mean, I'm, That's a wide <laughs> <way>. <laughs> I'm not a psycho who's got like a fish tank. I'm like, which one am I having today? You know, that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, enjoy your day. <laughs> enjoy your good Friday, people. Big up, bro. Big up. <laughs>